All right. Hello. I am the last person you're going to hear from before the vice president comes here tonight. So I'm going to keep to time tonight. But I picked that song, Happy, because I love to be happy. But most of the time, I'm not. <laughs> and I want to tell you why. I want to welcome you to CPAC and the United States of America, where illegals with criminal records in some states have even more rights and protections than American citizens who live here. That's exactly what I said. They're called sanctuary cities. So what's that got to do with CPAC tonight? Everything. It's simple. Really, it's about the Constitution, national security, and the first order of government, which is the protection and safety of its citizens. And in Trump parlance, it's called law and order. So, now I know a little about law and order. I spent over three decades on the battlefield where the fight between good and evil unfolds every day. I have seen the ugliest side of life and the pain that people go through for no reason. They didn't do anything. They didn't ask for it. They're just going about their day like the rest of us when all of a sudden, like a thunderbolt, their lives are forever changed by someone who made the decision to victimize them. And never, ever forget, it is the criminal who makes the choice to commit a crime. And so my job as a prosecutor an elected judge, and a three-time elected district attorney, and yes, every time with the conservative endorsement on the conservative line, was to fight for those who never chose to be a part of the criminal justice system in the first place, the ones who never did anything and didn't deserve it. So. So let's go through the Constitution and a couple of basics. Number one, our founding fathers made clear in the Constitution that immigration is a matter for the federal government. The federal government. Now, Article 1, Section 8, Subdivision 4 entrusts to the federal legislative branch the power to regulate citizenship. But today, in cities and states across this great nation, progressive mayors are prioritizing the protection of illegal criminals who not only violated our law to come here, but in addition, committed additional crimes while they were here. These mayors are directing that local police, under their jurisdiction, not share information about these criminal illegals and not assist the feds or ICE when they issue a hold or a detainer warrant so that they can be deported. And as a result, they roam freely among us. It was a sunny day. She was walking along the pier. She was in a place where she had a right to be with someone that she loved, her dad. 
He was a criminal, illegal alien in the same vicinity, a place that he had no right whatsoever to be. The courts had ordered him deported at least five times, and his conviction for at least seven felonies made him a career criminal. And as she lay dying on that cold pier from the gunshot wound fired by the man using yet an illegal weapon who had no right, no right to be there, she begged for her father's help. But there was no help for Kate. All the protections are now in place for her killer. He was 19. He came here illegally and like so many others his age. He crossed the border from Central America and he openly admitted, I'm a gang member. That didn't stop the Obama administration from allowing him into our country. His gang, MS-13. One of the most violent gangs in the world where initiation ranges from rape to beating someone to death in front of other gang members. He too had been ordered out of the country. But in spite of his many convictions, New York City Mayor de Blasio believes he needs protection. <laughs> and local police therefore ignored ICE and the federal request to hold him, at least until they arrived. And today he wanders freely wherever he wants. And as a result, all who come in contact with him risk MS-13 criminal activities. Now make no mistake, all of us, are immigrants, unless you're a Native American. <laughs> okay, I'm with you. But I'm not here to talk about immigration laws. I'm here to talk about sanctuary cities that are asylums for criminal illegals. And if you believe in America and conservative values, and everything in our Constitution. It is time for you to demand an end to the criminal enclaves that are known as sanctuary cities. <laughs> the sanctuary apologists argue that holding a criminal illegal for pickup by ICE destroys the relationship between police and the immigrant community. Wrong. If you think that an illegal is going to tell a cop about a crime committed by yet another illegal, you are sadly mistaken. I know. Build that wall. Okay, they're already here. They're already here. Now, <laughs> even the illegal who is a victim knows that the illegal criminal who victimized him is protected and has sanctuary. The victim is more afraid of the other illegal with sanctuary than he is of the cops. So what's the point? Now, for all of you who might be interested, Congress has already passed a law, I use it many times, it's called a U visa. We don't need sanctuary cities. If someone is going to cooperate with law enforcement, we give him a U visa. He's protected, his family's protected, his mother, his family, who else? everybody's protected, right? We don't need to put all whole cities at risk. 
Now, fast forward. President Trump, in his first 30 days, Pursuant to his word, has signed an executive order prioritizing the deportation of criminal illegals and those ordered deported, as well as those who abuse our money and welfare programs. Not bad. The consequence, if the locals don't cooperate the president has indicated that they risk federal grant monies that's used in part for law enforcement and child protection. That means there will be fewer cops and less protection in those sanctuary cities to protect American citizens who are subject to being victimized and are living in these criminal enclaves. And as the left marches and they spew allegations of hatred, and they demonize our president, calling for his impeachment. They're ignorant of the facts and the law, and they don't care about American citizens who are in jeopardy. Folks, there's a big difference between compassion for those who come here to work and those who are a danger to the rest of us. And so, it is time it is time to take the country back. We started with President Trump and Vice President Pence, but it's time to stop listening to the nonsense that the left is spewing. It is time to protect the law-abiding citizens of this country. And it is time for law and order. President Trump and Vice President Pence understand that the first order of government is the protection of its citizens, and we cannot and we will not allow sanctuaries as innocent Americans become subject to random acts of violence and death by people who shouldn't even be here in the first place. So enough of this benign-sounding sanctuary city hogwash. <laughs> to all those mayors in New York, in Chicago, in Los Angeles, and D.C. who say they won't retreat as a sanctuary city, I ask, at what point do we stop the violence and the killings? Are you willing to risk it all to protect the illegal who is a criminal? And if so, who is it okay to lose? Who is it okay to risk? Your son, your daughter, your mother? You resist deportation of those criminal illegals who have no right to be here and even worse and risk the federal money that puts cops on the street to protect American citizens? How dare you? We don't need your sanctimonious condescension as to whether or not we as Americans are kind enough or Christian enough. We are. It is time for us to go back to the America that our founding fathers intended, one that they might actually recognize. And like President Trump, it is time for us to stop being politically correct and start being morally right. Thank you, CPAC. Thank you, Matt Schlapp. God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you.